Wyke, hello. Welcome to Talking Rock Golf Course. We are on Shwalax territory of the Shwakwekmik people. We are on hole number seven. It is absolutely gorgeous. And Shwalak actually means bear. So on this hole, if we come a little bit further, you will see in the bunker a beautiful bear made out of grass. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the view. This is going to be such a fun hole to play from the whites. So today we will be talking about the five most important golf rules for the beginner golfer. The first one will be off the tee box. You have to stand behind the two rocks or the two colored signs that they have. Your ball has to be behind it, two club lengths, followed by the bunker. I will go and hit out of that bunker where the bear is just to show you how we cannot ground our club in the bunker. Then we will talk about when your ball goes in the water, if it's a lake, a pond, whatever the water body is, if your ball goes in, if there's red stakes, what does that mean? What does the penalty mean? How do you drop the ball? Stay tuned for the rest of these rules in golf. For the beginner, let's keep it nice and simple just for you. Let's see what I can do with this driver. So I know you've watched my video on gaps. So we're breathing, we're doing our practice swing, there might be some animal that's running down across in the fairway. I don't know what that is, but we are in nature, so that is completely normal. Here we go, I'm breathing, my grip is ready. I have my aim and alignment. I am going to have a nice big stance. It's my driver. My hips are back. and crushing it like Phil, hitting bombs like Phil, down the middle of the fairway. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. Let's get started with the rules. Let's talk about golf rules. Quick five golf rules on the golf course. The first one, teeing your ball up. Rule number one, your ball cannot go in front of these two stones that we have over here. You cannot tee it up in front of those stones. You have to tee it up in line. If there was an imaginary line going through behind the line at all times, at every hole, no exceptions. You can go as far back as two club lengths. What does that mean? This is one club length. This is another club length. So technically, imagine you are making now a big square or a rectangle over here and you can tee up anywhere in this box. Not outside of two club lengths, not outside this way of the rock and not in front. We will make an imaginary box and we will tee up our ball at every hole inside the tee box. Imaginary square, I am in line. Let's try and hit this one for you. But that, my friends, is rule number one in golf. Do not break it, it's a penalty if you do. So let's not add to our score, then we already need to. Here we go, breathing. That wasn't a good shot, but I'm within the tee box. Here we go, rule number two coming up soon. Rule number two for beginners. Your ball will eventually land in what we call the bunker. Some people say, oh, you're going to the beach, is reference to the bunker. Also, oh, you might be in the sand, is a common saying. Again, that means you are in the bunker. Rule on bunker play, whatever club that you have, this is what we call a fairway bunker because I'm not up by the green, I've hit my tee shot, I've landed in here and I still have two more shots to get to my par five to my green. Here we go. I cannot place my golf club 
in the bunker, I'm gonna show you this for demonstration, like this, like we do for every other swing. We take a little divot in our practice swing just to get started. The rule about the bunker is you cannot ground your club. What does that mean? You cannot place your club in front of the ball at all. Grounding the club, meaning putting the club on in the sand, is a no-no stroke penalty. So what you have to do, if this is something that you are, it's hard for you to get your grip out, you can get your grip out in the grass in front of the bunker. I have my grip out here, my full grip. I walk into my bunker, I stand behind my ball, I look where I have to go, I aim. And we all know in bunker shots, you're supposed to swivel and get nice and comfortable in the sand. But my club does not touch the sand at address. So for the gaps, you cannot place the club down. I take a look, I'm relaxed. And I, when I swing, only then can I take sand out and the ball should go flying out. So let's try it. So you can see I took some sand out. I've made a mess because of COVID. We have no rakes. So what do we do? We take our nice little foot and we make it nice and smooth because you have already learned that in your etiquette with me before. This is a community game, so we leave it nice and smooth for the person behind us so there's no big holes for them. So that's rule number two. You cannot ground your club in the sand at all. We are on hole number nine here at Talking Rock. We have a massive lake to the left, million mosquitoes, Make sure you bring your bug spray. Make sure you keep it in your golf bag. Also, if you haven't watched my second video about 10 must-haves in your golf bag, make sure you check that out after. But rule number three, hazard, water hazard, massive lakes. We have a huge, huge lake, which you'll see in a second, to my left. My good friend, Megan, who's also a coach, always says, tee it up on the side of the hazard. So I will tee it up on the left-hand side and aim away from the hazard. Tee it up on the side of the hazard, aim away from the lake. I actually crushed that one. I'm very proud of myself. So my ball did not go in the lake, but we're going to pretend that your ball did go in the lake because you're a beginner golfer and trust me, all of us, even ones that are advanced, our balls go in the water. It is very normal. We will talk about how you drop the ball correctly if your ball goes in the water. Let's go to the lake. So we're by the lake. We're going to pretend that my ball went in from this direction, okay? It doesn't matter if it went further up ahead, but it matters on the point of entry. So if we make a straight line and pretend my ball went in this way, how do we drop our ball? We walk all the way up to the lake of where we think our point of entry was. So this is where the lake is. You take the longest club you have in your bag, which is your driver. You make it two club lengths away. So I'm gonna show you. Here's one, I put a T down. Here is another club length. I put a T down. And you never wanna go with your club lengths closer to the hole ever. You always go away from the hole, either, either laterally or back towards the tee box, okay? So you cannot do two club lengths going towards the hole. So I put my tee down, I come and stand beside my tee. New rules of golf. Before we used to drop it from our shoulders, now we drop it from our knees. So you have your hand, you have your ball, you have it down here by your knee, and you just drop it, and that is where your ball is. You pick your tee up, you grab your club, you restart and you go for it. More to come with that. Here we go, I'm going to hit this shot. Oh 
I'm gonna try and carry the lake. That's a little bit long, but if my ball went into the lake from here, I would have to drop straight in a line wherever the point of entry was. If I went that way, I would drop on that side. If I went that way, I would drop on that side. Always on this side of the lake, never closer to the hole, always. Here we go. We are in hole 10. It is pouring down rain, but some of us put on our waterproofs and we keep going. I for one am not a fan, but for this video I will do it. So on this tee box, on the left hand side are a lot, a lot, a lot of trees and most of us will end up going in those trees. So what does the rule mean when your ball goes out of bounds or you cannot find your ball because it's gone in the trees? How do you drop it? What does that mean? Usually there'll be white stakes that are along there. But if I go in the trees and it's out of bounds, it'll have white stakes. You have to then drop a ball, okay? Also, what you can do is if I hit the ball into the trees and then I, I know it's out of bounds, I have to re-put a ball down from here, from the tee box. That will be my third shot. So I hit my first shot, boom, I hit it into the trees and it's out of bounds. Okay, then that counts as a penalty, so that's plus one. So now I'm at two strokes. Now I'm hitting my third shot from the tee box again. So out of bounds gives you one extra shot and you have to tee it up right back from the tee box if that's where you started. If you're in the fairway and you hit it out of bounds, then you will go laterally and put the ball down. But don't worry, we will go through all of that in a little bit. Rule number five, you will find yourself in all kinds of places on the golf course, like where I am right now. I have hit it somewhere up here. I'm looking for my ball. I have five minutes to find my ball. I really hope I find it. Usually the people that you play will help you find your ball. But let's just say it is lost. This stuff is really thick up here or you're too scared to go in. Not a problem, but you do get a one stroke. But if you can find it, you have five minutes. So make it snappy if you can and look for it. Always keep an eye on where you hit. Try and find a bigger tree to remember, okay, I came into this angle, but I just cannot find it. So just like how we did the drop earlier for water, we will take the longest club, which will be your driver. I will point of entry. I will take my driver. Now remember, I cannot put my club going towards the hole, always away from the hole. And my ball is in here to my knee, right? I'm dropping my ball from my knee. So I'll show you from this angle. Never on the side closest to the hole, always away. So I will have it towards my knee, parallel and drop. And then I will pick my tee up and I will hit my next shot from here. I have a very special guest here today, which I'm very excited about. It's a great story. We're gonna to learn tons of information about the First Nation community here in British Columbia. And please introduce yourself to our golf group out there. <laughs> Wagged, my name is Camille. I'm the room's division manager here at Quail Lodge and Talking Rock Resort. Here we go. Guide so, us, where are we? So we're gonna head out to the pit home. So okay. Quail Lodge, Quayote actually means where the sun's rays first touch the ground. So over 30 years ago, the community got together and the first day of the seasons, when the sun's rays touch the ground, they put a stake in the ground and that's where the building's located today. Amazing. So our lobby, as well as our chief's room where most weddings happen, actually resembles a pit home. So I'll take you over to the pit home. Amazing, let's do that. So a pit home is known as a kakuli. It's an underground home. The Shaquatmik people were travelers and so throughout the spring, summer and fall, what they would do is they would forage, they would fish, they would hunt and every winter they would build a new pit home and multiple families would live in the home throughout the course of winter. And, and then where would they head after winter? So the Shaquetmik territory actually goes all the ways down past Invermere Canal Flats. So 
they moved a lot. They had to move with where they needed to go for food and stuff. Our chef, Chris Whitaker, is actually from Vancouver. He's world renowned and he is a huge believer in local foraging and utilizing local companies. Amazing. So everything that he purchases and uses is all within 500 kilometers. He uses foragers when huckleberries are ready, wild roses, he's gonna be making some teas and stuff like that. We do have on-site greenhouses that he utilizes every day. So we're, he's very passionate wow. about his food, yeah. And you know what's really exciting? After this, we get to eat in your restaurant. <laughs> so this is great insight. So we're heading to a Kukuli, which is an underground pit home. Okay. And the Little Shoe Schwab band, their history, the Shaquetnik people, this is what they lived in over the winter times. Oh, wow, look at this entrance. So this is where they lived in the winters? Yes. And they would build this? They built a new one pretty much every year. They never used the same one because they they couldn't travel back and forth that many times, right? Right. So when you come into a pit home, you go right okay. around. So you're oh, following good. the sun. You're going east to west. It smells yeah. amazing in here. Isn't it? So we do bus tours from all over the world. And when you come in, we will actually do salmon over an open fire for you and bannock over a fire. But the families would sleep up here. On the top part? On the top part. Okay. And another cool thing that you might like to know is women were the only ones that used the front door. <gasps> Men actually came through the top and it was almost like a ladder system. And what they did was the ladder or the, the pole had notches in it. And those notches, you know, the men would know that. And the original pathway could be like a mile long. Oh, right. So that nobody really knew where they were going. Coming in. Yeah. What else do you think the person that comes here would want to know maybe about the community or the band? We're all very passionate about this place. You know, you walk through those doors and you know that something's happening. You can feel it, you're grounded. And so many of us that have been here for years, we genuinely love this place and we know what it can give to the people that come here, whether or not you're getting married or having a Christmas party or anything in between, we can teach you something. You know, we can do hide tanning on sites, we can do um, rattle making, we can do drum making, you know, and everybody wow. brings a story. Everybody brings a story. So it's, we have a community here. So I think for young people, like what have you got to lose? Try something new, you know, apply for a summer vacation, right? Come That's apply it. somewhere. Even if Internship, it's somewhere in Canada, yeah, just anything. do three, four months and try something new. You know, and once you walk through the doors of any place that has a golf course, basically, there's going to be restaurants, there's going to be banquets, there's going to be, there's so many things that happen. And if you don't like one thing, you can try something else. Absolutely. So it's a welcoming space. You don't have to have a lot of money nope. to come over here and help out and work and even learn the game. Yeah. So if, let's say for example, if you were an employee at uh, Talking Rock, would they, uh, would the employees be able to play or get lessons or learn the game? Is that an option? So actually, um, if you work here, you actually get to play for free. You Wonderful. pay for your cart only and it's discounted even then. Um, and then currently Tuesday evenings at, at 3.30 for staff, we get free staff lessons from the golf pros. Amazing. So, so you even get to pick up the skill and learn it. You get to pick it up, you get to use the clubs and they will spend the time with you to show you what you need to do. I love everything about that. <laughs> Make sure you come and check Talking Rock out. It is beautiful. You can, you can, if you're not a golfer and just don't want to play or whatever the case is, you can come and stay in the resort, enjoy this beautiful lake and the view. It's breathtaking, and just have maybe a nature walk. Right? They can. There's plenty for them to do. We you have, keep we them have busy. Long games. We've got paddle boards. We've got kayaks. We've got canoes, and then we have a huge culture department that also do horticulture walks. Like I said, we can do drum making, rattle making. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Drum making, like wow. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Anything else you want to leave the viewer with? Just come, come visit us. <laughs> come visit, that's it. Um, and how do you say thank you? Cook's gem. Cook's gem, Cook's gem. We Cook's really gem. do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look at the backdrop. Unbelievable, it is beautiful. 
I've been rained on, it's been sunny, it's been cold, it's warm. We've, we've had a fantastic time. You have now learned all the five beginner golf rules which should help you out. This is the education part of the video, right? We were inspired by the unbelievable views that we've seen. I'm so thankful for you for watching this video. In the month of July, as you are aware, we have amazing content for all local British Columbia golf courses in the Okanagan Valley. It is breathtaking. You will not be disappointed. Please come check them out. There are wonderful people here as well. And you're gonna see a 360 of how gorgeous this place is while I try and par the 15th hole. Don't miss this shot though, come on. That's a very good chip that I've just done. But the views, the gods made the rain stop for these views for me. Here we go. And there is my par on the 15th at Talking Rock, everyone. See you next Thursday. As always, you know, click the like button. I'm sure you've already subscribed, but if you have not, please make sure you subscribe and leave any comments you would like to know. Don't forget your mosquito spray when you come out at Talking Rock. See you next week. It's beautiful, <laughs> hole 14, pissing rain, <laughs> and I don't know how to flip it around. Uh, you can't when you're doing it like that. You gotta do it on Instagram and then see it. But we're wet. soaked. It's so wet. She won't stop <laughs> she can't getting stop, me won't to film <laughs> in the torrential downpour. Yeah. And... Here this is are. what hard work looks like behind the camera where everyone thinks you just get up and just shoot YouTube videos and it's just easy and normal, is it? Think about how much work we've done just to capture content. No, not easy, <laughs> not okay. Yeah, and it's not for everyone either, I guess, no, right? No, no, it's Only not. for the crazies maybe sometimes. Yeah, it's coming down. It's pouring. <laughs>